The DACA debate is discussed within the Supreme Court today. 100 people become U.S. citizens at Cal State Bakersfield, and local candidates begin to file official paperwork. We'll have a live report from the county elections office. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maddie Jansen. The Supreme Court heard arguments this morning on DACA, or Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and a bare majority seemed likely to allow President Trump to follow through on his plan to end the program. Demonstrators gathered outside the court this morning, while Justices Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, and Brett Kavanaugh appeared likely to say DACA was properly shut down. Chief Justice John Roberts did not seem to be as strongly convinced. Roberts may be the deciding vote. Uh, DACA allows the children of undocumented immigrants to remain here if they were under 16 when their parents brought them to the U.S. and if they arrived by 2007. The federal program has allowed nearly 800,000 young people, known as Dreamers, to avoid deportation and remain in the U.S. The Trump administration announced in 2017 it would end DACA protections, but lower federal courts stepped in to keep the program alive. The Supreme Court is expected to decide if the administration can end DACA by spring 2020. And this morning, President Trump tweeted, Many of the people in DACA, no longer very young, are far from angels. Some are very tough, hardened criminals. President Obama said he had no legal right to sign order, but would anyway. If Supreme Court remedies with overturn, a deal will be made with Dems for them to stay. Back here at home at Cal State University Bakersfield today, 100 residents are becoming U.S. citizens. The naturalization ceremony is the first to be held at CSUB. A CSUB sociology professor, Dr. Alim Kabedi, is among the dozens being sworn in today. The ceremony was organized by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Fresno Field Office and CSU Bakersfield and was planned to fall right after Veterans Day. The ceremony is the culmination of a lengthy and rigorous process of interviews, exams, and paperwork. Officials say the process takes a minimum of five years, but can take some people decades. A nine-year-old boy sitting in his home with his family was grazed by a bullet in an overnight shooting in East Bakersfield. It happened around 10 o'clock last night on Niles Street. That's near Williams Elementary School. Police say the gunfire came from outside, but a stray bullet hit the boy in his home. Police say there may have been a fight in the area leading up to the shooting. No one's been arrested so far. The boy was not badly hurt and was taken to the hospital for treatment. A fire broke out in Northeast Bakersfield overnight, ended with a firefighter being taken to the hospital. Flames were spotted just before 8 p.m. in the garage of a vacant home on Goodman Street near North Kern. Crews knocked down the flames, but one firefighter was hurt when he apparently fell or fractured his leg or ankle. Fire crews spoke to the home's owner who said they'd had problems with squatters in the past and the home caught fire a few weeks ago. 17 News is your local election headquarters. Today's the first day candidates for local office can officially file papers to run. 17's Aton Wallace is live at the county elections office downtown where candidates have been dropping by. Aton. Maddie, good afternoon to you. Yeah, you can see things here in the elections office downtown. Pretty empty at this point, but we did see a few candidates drop by. Specifically, today marks the beginning of what's called the filing process for nomination. Prospective candidates come here to the elections office where they will pay a filing fee, and then they are handed a form on which they will need to collect a certain amount of signatures from qualified registered voters who live in their district. Now, once all that is complete, the candidates will earn their spot on the primary election ballot this March. That's March 3rd, 2020. And a reminder, the first, fourth, and fifth supervisorial seats are up for grabs in 2020. So are both of Kern's congressional seats and assembly seats, and the race for Bakersfield's mayor also will take place in March. Mayoral candidates can file papers at the, city's, at the city clerk's office on Truxton Avenue. Now, this far today, we've seen a few candidates or representatives for candidates come here to file papers. One of those, Liz Newman, you see her on screen. She's Congressman Kevin McCarthy's campaign manager. She dropped in to file papers on behalf of the House Minority Leader. He is in Washington today. And the last day to file, we should say, for non-incumbents is December 6th. Now, as for other candidates who drop by here, well, we will definitely feature them. And you can catch that tonight on 17 News at 5. Reporting live at the Elections Office downtown, Aton Wallace, 17 News.
Thank you, Aton. And they're filing again under sunny skies, Kev. <laughs> yeah, we take you outside a little bit of a haze. You can't see the mountains really very well, and that's due to the air quality issues that we've been seeing with this very strong ridge of high pressure over California. We are going to see some improvements in the next couple of days. Yesterday's high was 78. Again, still above where we should be. Our normal high is 67. We sit at 78 degrees right now. A west-northwest wind at 10, so a light breeze out there. As we take a look at the temperatures this afternoon, we will be in the lower 80s, slipping back into the 50s by midnight. And then for the Tatchby area, 73 right now. A southeast wind at 9 this afternoon. Very nice in terms of the winds. This is about what we're going to see. No strong winds expected, just a light breeze. And then temperatures are expected to be in the 70s before we're back into those chilly 40s overnight. The other thing we'll be seeing throughout the late afternoon and evening hours, some high clouds pushing into the area. But what's tomorrow looking like? I've got the details on that in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Kevin. In national news now, former President Jimmy Carter is recovering from surgery to remove pressure on his brain. The former president went, underwent surgery at Emory University Hospital in Atlanta this morning. Doctors are relieving the pressure from bleeding caused by recent falls. One giving him a black eye seen in this video right here. That did not stop Mr. Carter, however, from working on a Habitat for Humanity home last month. The Carter Center tweeted today there were no complications from the surgery and the former president will remain in the hospital for observation. Starting today, the work begins to bring new homes to help homeless and poor veterans in Oildale. The California Veterans Assistance Foundation broke ground this morning on Covey Cottages. A 12-unit village of so-called tiny homes to give permanent housing to veterans who are homeless or at risk of falling into homelessness. Our idea, when we acquired this property uh, about three years ago, we approached Deb Johnson with the California Veterans Assistance Foundation and said, you know what, we've got a piece of property out in Oildale and we would like to donate that to you if you could in turn uh, come up with veteran housing. That's, that's the criteria. And they said, yeah, we can do that. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happened between this spot and that spot in terms of the timeline. But it's exciting, it's exciting to see today the actual groundbreaking and all this coming together. Each cottage will be about 400 square feet, including a living area, bedroom, bathroom, and kitchenette. There will also be a community center on site with washers and dryers where agencies can come in and provide supportive services like medical screenings, cooking classes, etc. The California Veterans Assistance Foundation hopes to have the cottages ready for residents by the end of June 2020. We're asking for your help meantime to make sure that local families in need have a warm holiday meal this Thanksgiving and Christmas. Tomorrow we're hosting our annual holiday food drive. Every year, KGET teams up with the Community Action Partnership of Kern, which distributes more than 12 million pounds of food through 113 partner agencies. The food bank relies on your donations to stock the shelves ahead of Thanksgiving and Christmas. We hope you'll stop by tomorrow sometime between 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. outside of our studios at 22nd and M Streets. We're looking for everything needed to cook up a holiday feast. Monetary donations are also welcome. And on Friday, you can join us for the 10th Annual Heroes and Helmets to help support local Make-A-Wish kids. Heroes and Helmets brings firefighters, wish kids, and their families together with our community for a day of giving. Make-A-Wish grants wishes to kids who battle critical illnesses. Again, the event is happening Friday outside of our studios here in downtown Bakersfield at 22nd and M. Donation drive is from 7 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And then join us for a drive through lunch between 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. $10 gets you a deep pit sandwich, chips, cookie, and a water. City and county firefighters will also be accepting donations outside our station here at the intersection is of Olive and Knudsen as well and also Mohawk and Rosedale until 1.30 in the afternoon. Still ahead, Disney gets into the streaming showdown. Details ahead as Disney Plus is now out and what premiere content it's offering. Plus, yet another major concern about smoking and the increasing threat to women. Your 17 Health Watch is after the break. Welcome back in your Health Watch this afternoon. More than 7 million American women live with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And research shows more are being diagnosed with and dying from COPD in recent years. Lacey Griffith reports. I thought it was a cold. Sandra Morris was a smoker diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease 14 years ago. She is one of the many women who live with this disease, affecting airways, which makes it hard to breathe. I'm more afraid of going out in cold season, flu season, and, you know, the hands. I constantly use sanitizer. But other than that, I'm not letting it beat me yet.
Statistics show the number of deaths among women from COPD has increased fourfold over the last three decades. Dr. Michael Lansing, a pulmonary specialist, says there are several reasons behind the rise in women being diagnosed. Advertising hit women, so in the 70s and 80s they started smoking, and now we're seeing that consequence now, so that's probably one thing. Another reason... In the past, it was perceived as just being a, a male disease, and women were underdiagnosed. So now they're being diagnosed, so the numbers are rising because of that. Symptoms include cough, shortness of breath, and chest tightness. And Lansing says COPD affects women more than men. Well, women, it has a greater impact on uh, them and their quality of life. They, they have more depression associated with it, uh, anxiety associated with it, and that makes it more difficult for them, if they're smokers, to stop smoking. Morris is on oxygen 24-7 and uses inhaler therapies. I go to pulmonary rehab twice a week, which is an exercise program, which I feel keeps me healthy. There is no cure for COPD, so Dr. Lansing says the goal is to keep the disease from progressing. Lacey Griffith reporting. All right, checking out that forecast. This haze it just does not seem to want to go away, Kev. Yeah, we've got some high clouds moving in, so we kind of got a mix of the haze and the high clouds around the area. But the good news is I think this haze, the air quality issue is going to improve for us uh, the next several days. Right now, we've got sunny skies out in Arvin, 80 degrees, and you can see that thin layer of haze. And then we've got a few high clouds up in up in the skies there, and you're also seeing that in Wasco. Currently 74 degrees there, and then Golden Hills, a few high clouds, but a beautiful start to the afternoon and uh, in the lower 70s. Uh, valley temperatures right around 74, 75 degrees except Taft at 77 into the mountains, 70s, lower 80s and then out in the desert Mojave at 73. So let's take a look at the regional view. Not a lot happening. Again, we've seen a few high clouds, but that is about it. But look off to the west. This is what we're going to be tracking as we go throughout uh, the afternoon and tonight. It's lacking moisture so I'm not expecting rain with this but we will see the increasing clouds throughout the afternoon, evening and and then tomorrow, the clouds will be hanging around. So high pressure has been in control. Whenever we see these strong ridges over California, we get the air quality issues that we've been seeing. But as the ridge breaks down and this trough approaches from the west, we're going to be able to mix up the atmosphere a little bit and we're going to see air quality improvements. So that's a great thing. Uh, but unfortunately, no rain is associated with this. So I'm going to put this into motion. Here's the cloud I was the cloud cover I was talking about. Kind of pushes in by this evening and then uh, the clouds kind of hang around through at least Friday morning and then by the the afternoon Friday, we'll start to see them thin out, and by the weekend, I think we'll see sunny skies again as another ridge of high pressure builds back in, and we start to see another change in some showers up in the Pacific Northwest. But no rain for us. Here's a look at the highs for today 74 in uh, Sacramento, 81 in Fresno, 70s down to the south into LA and San Diego. We're looking at 82 to the east into Phoenix today. On the national weather, we were tracking a front that did bring some snow to the Great Lakes and parts of Wisconsin, Michigan, and also into Illinois. Uh, uh, the last 24 to 48 hours, and then it pushed off to the east. So we've got some snow up in the northeast and some rain into the Carolinas. And there was a good dividing line. I want to show you Peoria, Illinois. My grandma lives there. Marilyn loves the weather. She's a big weather watcher, and she sent this picture and said, we've got snow on the ground. It is chilly, and I'm staying in the house. And here's the Futurecast model. So this system pushes off to the east, but another surge of cold Arctic air comes in as we head into the weekend, and it looks like more snow snow is going to fall into parts of Minneapolis, even parts of Chicago possibly. And take a look at the, well, the dividing line is basically from the Great Lakes north. You get that colder air and then as we travel east we get that warmer air and that falls as rain. As we take a look at the air quality for today, unhealthy for sensitive groups with an AQI at 105. No burning today. Just keep that in mind. But nice afternoon. No need for that. As we take a look at the numbers, 81 in Bakersfield, 79 in Delano, 80 in Button Willow and Taft. And then for the mountains, and the Kern River Valley, we're looking at a nice day ahead. Again, we'll see some high clouds increase by the afternoon and evening. And uh, 72 on the high for Fraser Park, 73 in Tatchby, and lower 80s for Lake Isabella and Kernville. And then for the desert, look for a south wind, 5 to 10 throughout the day, a high of 77 in Mojave. So tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies along with Thursday. I think we'll start to see the clouds uh, kind of move out by Friday. But that's where we're going to get the coolest of the air on Friday, 70, 71 on Saturday, and then sunny in 77, Sunday. Monday and Monday. And then for the mountains, clouds for you Wednesday, Thursday, and cooler temperatures on the way for you as well. Friday, 63, 65 on Saturday, uh, and then right near 70 again by Monday. 
And then the Kern River Valley forecast, some clouds for you tomorrow, Thursday, before clearing out again Friday into the weekend. Your coolest day comes on Friday as well with a high of 73, then right near 80 Sunday and Monday. So kind of a mixed bag out there today. That haze, some high clouds. Mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to have to deal with, but improvements on the way. Okay, can't wait for that. Thanks, Kev. Amazon getting set to tighten its grip on consumer spending. We're back with details as the online giant goes grocery. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. We're back in your business watch this afternoon and checking out stocks. The Dow is down about 30 points so far in trading. The Nasdaq up six. The S&P 500 up just a fraction at last check. And checking out oil prices while we're at it. West Texas Intermediate selling for 56.80 a barrel this afternoon. And Midway Sunset started the day at 60.61 a barrel. According to USA Today, an Amazon spokesperson says the company will be opening a new grocery store next year in Los Angeles. The e-commerce giant didn't reveal many details, but says the store will not be a Whole Foods, which Amazon bought in 2017. Amazon didn't reveal the name or whether the new store would be part of a chain. The company is also not giving details on pricing or the products the store will carry. The news comes about... Eight months after the Wall Street Journal reported that Amazon was negotiating to open supermarkets in most local cities. A new competitor today in the streaming wars, Disney Plus, launched overnight, joining a growing list of streaming services that give viewers a lot of options. Many might be checking their budgets, too, to see if they can squeeze in another seven bucks out of their monthly expenses. That's how much Disney Plus will cost, less than some competitors. But is it enough to sway viewers who feel the streaming landscape is starting to get oversaturated? Here's NBC's Joe Fryer. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? It's no fairy tale. Hundreds of movies are now available on Disney Plus. From the company's earliest animated classics, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I've been fighting with one arm tied behind my back. To modern hits like Captain Marvel, Mickey lovers are all ears. I'm the big Disneyland fan, so maybe I might get it. <laughs> the new streaming service costs $6.99 a month or $69.99 for a yearly subscription. It can be watched on TVs, web browsers, or apps and features movies and TV series from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars. And no TV! You'll even get 30 years worth of Simpsons episodes. Don't! I really like the selection. I grew up on Disney, so it's kind of nostalgic. Disney's rollout comes two weeks after Apple entered the streaming market. At $4.99 a month, Apple TV Plus boasts A-plus stars like Jennifer Aniston in The Morning Show. Though the service's initial shows have not generated much critical acclaim. There's not content on there that I'm like immediately excited about. Still, second seasons have already been ordered for four of Apple's shows, and according to multiple reports, sources close to Apple say the service delivered millions of viewers right off the bat, thrilling the company. Everybody else that I know has it, and they're saying how the shows are great, so it's just a matter of time. For viewers, it's all adding up. If you signed up for all seven of these streaming services, it would cost you about $75 a month. And that's not counting your cable or internet bills. I feel like the market is completely oversaturated. It's getting difficult to know what one has and the other one doesn't. That's one reason why Disney is offering a bundle. Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu with ads for $12.99 a month. Trying to keep viewers from going against the street. I'm not sure I need to keep piling it on and piling it on, but on the other hand, I don't want to miss anything. That was NBC's Joe Fryer reporting. We're raining cats and dogs the rest of the way today. Up next, an update on a pup plucked from the rubble when Hurricane Dorian barreled through the Bahamas. Welcome back. We're back with an update on a dog named Miracle who was rescued after surviving more than three weeks trapped in the rubble when Hurricane Dorian hit the Bahamas. NBC's Carrie Sanders has the exclusive as Miracle is about to join his forever family. This is Miracle. 34.8. Hard to believe this dog has almost doubled his weight, learned to walk again, and is so full of life when his story began on the doorstep of death. Found in the wake of Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas, trapped under rubble, Miracle survived an incredible three and a half weeks. He's a fighter, he's a survivor, and he's a great symbol of hope for people that have lost everything. 
Lori Simmon, founder of Big Dog Ranch Rescue, coordinated the team that saved Miracle's life. He was extremely anemic and his muscles on his hind end had wasted away to nothing. It took a drone with heat-seeking capabilities to find him buried beneath the debris. Good morning. We'll look skin and bones, but alive. You may remember when we first met Miracle here on Today, how weak and emaciated he looked. And then how he surprised us all. This is the first wow. time we've seen her stand up since... Look at that. Look at the strength. Oh, okay, wow. let's look. That was like watching a flower bloom. Like I'm literally know. watching it. That was awesome, that was Carrie. So cool. Since then, Miracle's been fed special food and treated with doggy hemp oil to quell his anxiety over the sound of thunderstorms. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Oh my God, how are you? 10,000 people sent in applications to adopt Miracle. It's a miracle that we got Miracle. <laughs> Today, one lucky family gets to take them home, Clark and Brianna Beatty, and their three daughters. They've had to keep the news a secret. He finally gets a boy. That's right. <laughs> and three little girls who are planning a big party for his arrival. Start of something good. Miracle, who was alone for three and a half weeks, now finding his forever home. We love you, Miracle! So sweet. That is NBC's Carrie Sanders reporting. Stitches at the airport may sound like a bad thing, but we're back with the cat that's changing that thought. Welcome back. Finally at noon with the holiday travel season ramping up. Flying can be a very stressful time. But a 13-pound cat named Stitches is helping put some travelers at ease. The 11-year-old Tabaco is a mixture of Tabby and Calico and is a new therapy cat at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. Her handler carts her around in a stroller that has a sign that says Pet Me. Stitches joins 96 therapy dogs at the airport that go around helping soothe the nerves of frazzled travelers. There are at least 70 U.S. airports with therapy animals programs. The program at Minneapolis St. Paul is the third largest behind Denver and L.A. Okay, I've so never wait. seen any therapy animals at LAX. I mean, and that's got to be some competition. You know how dogs and cats are. <laughs> what, if they're mid yeah, together? Yeah. Well, that would not be a soothing situation. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here at noon. We'll see you back tonight at 5. 17 News, your local news leader, continues 24 hours a day on KGET.com and our 17 News app in the spirit of the Golden Empire. 17 News.